Welcome to Sausage on a Fork, a podcast dedicated to the UK's longest-running children's drama programme, Grange Hill. My name's Neil, and in each episode, I'll interview a former cast member about their life before, during and after their time on the programme. Okay, welcome to the latest episode of Sausage John of Fork. And just before we start, can I just say thank you to everyone that's voted uh, for Sausage John of Fork in the Listener's Choice Awards, in the British Podcast Awards. Now, the voting closes on Thursday, the 29th of August. So if you haven't got your vote in yet, I would really appreciate it if you would vote for Sausage John of Fork. If you go to britishpodcastsawards.com forward slash voting, Type sausage on a fork into the box. Uh, it does come up twice, so just click on the first one, register your vote, and then don't forget to check your emails afterwards to verify your vote as well. That would be great. Thank you very much. Now, I have been joined for this episode by none other than Colin Ridgewell, who played Colin Brown. Colin, welcome to Sausage on a Fork. Thank you very much. I'm very, very happy at last to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, we, we have been trying to sort this for some time, haven't we? So it, we, it's, it's great. We've been back and here. forth, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, we certainly have. <laughs> we certainly have. Okay, so what we'll do, Colin, is we'll start this episode the way we start every episode. And if you can tell us how you first got into acting. Goodness me. Okay, so how did I start? So basically, I used to swim. Uh, that was my thing. I used to swim for the county and all that sort of stuff. And I was doing it like swimming like five times a week before school, after school. And then I sort of went into secondary school and I was just like, just I'm, I'm kind of done with it. Like, I don't really want to do it anymore. Yeah. So obviously you've got uh, you've got you've got somebody that, that was in the house that was out the house all the time doing things you know like swimming and all these sort of activities uh-huh. and then um and then it all just kind of stopped so my parents were like well you need to do something like you, <laughs> you know you need a an outlet you know you got to do something so my sister was doing drama classes at the local sort of uh what we thought was like a local school where she go do tap and ballet and all that uh-huh. sort of stuff and um so I went along because it was right next to uh, the school that I, I ended up going to. And it turned, out, it turned out to be an agency. Now, back then in sort of 93, we did we, we were like, what's that? And they were like, oh, we're an agency. So we so you you come, we do drama classes. And then if we think you're right, we send you up for auditions. Uh-huh. And it was completely new, like as in not new as a thing, but new to us. We were like, oh, we didn't. OK, so, yeah. So I, I went along to uh, Jackie Palmer's stage school um after school and things like that and um and and yeah and then I got started sending up for auditions for various things and um and yeah and that's how I kind of got into it it was uh it, it was nothing that it was like oh this is really what I want to do it was yeah. more like a happy coincidence when yeah. I was 12 13 do you know what I mean yeah and did you did you do anything before Grange Hill <laughs> I did <laughs> I handed some kittens over <laughs> at the very beginning of the bill. I think you, you uh, the bill was a rite of passage for anybody. Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> and randomly, they auditioned for, there was a game show called Finders Keepers. Yeah. <laughs> and you used to like run about the house and, yeah. and literally find stuff with Neil Buchanan. Yeah. And randomly, they they are they actually auditioned for that. I don't know, like n- not for a serious actor. I did that. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. I want a kite though. So do you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, brilliant. I still have. <laughs> um, uh goodness, the bill that no, I think that was about it. There was nothing right. of note. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. So then how how did Grain Jill come about then? So Christine Seacombe, who was the producer at the time, she was going around all the sort of stage schools looking for New Year Sevens. And what they were doing is uh, if you fell into the right age bracket, uh, you'd go along on a sort of Saturday morning when Christine was there and maybe some uh, some some PAs and whatnot. And then you'd, you'd they'd gather us all together or whoever is the right, you know, oh, he'll be right. She'll be right. All that sort of yeah. stuff. And, and we played a game. And I remember because we did it at uh, literally at my at my stage school sort of thing. Um, and we played a game and I forget what the game was. Maybe it was a bit of improv or something like that. Uh-huh. Something that kind of they knew what they were looking for. But as a young, you know, we didn't know what they were looking for. Yeah. And anyway, um, 
<laughs> I, I I just remember doing something, and I, I forget what it was, but I just remember doing something like the room had gone quiet after the game, and I said something, and people laughed, and I was like, oh. so that <laughs> that was very good. Anyway, so how did I? So this is how how did I get into Grange Hill? So Christine Seacombe was like, oh, I like that guy. Yeah. So I went for an audition at the BBC, and I went up for two roles. One was for uh Aidan David's role oh yeah as Arnie mm -hmm. and I didn't get that because I wasn't sort of he needed to be well he needed to be Arnie's role do you know what yeah. I mean like yeah only yeah only Aidan bought that because that yeah. was his role do you know what I mean and the other role was Sam yeah uh, played by Kevin Bishop and uh, me and Kevin used to do the the auditions and all that sort of stuff and we just went back and forth like we we auditioned quite a few times right. um uh going back up to the bbc you know and um and yeah and and long story short i didn't get kevin bishop's role because kevin bishop got that oh. and i didn't get aiden's role because he got that <laughs> but christine seacombe bless her at the time she was like i quite like that guy so she gave me my own part which is my my name is colin and because there was never a part for me wow yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is my sort of massive sort of claim to something. Yeah, I mean, because I, I have I've written a question down here which says, "Was he always going to be called Colin?" No. <laughs> so yeah, so obviously the part was, <laughs> there was the part was, there was just yours. Yeah. Yeah, there was two parts going, and I didn't wow. get either of them. But she quite liked. Well, uh, all respect to Christine Seacombe. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. Um, yeah. Brilliant. So you started in series seventy. Yeah. Which went on air in. 1994, it went on it. So 30 years ago, we were you was on air, but obviously it was the year before when you were uh, when you filmed yeah. it. And Colin's sort of first introduction was he was part of the drama group. They were they were going to be putting on Romeo and Juliet. That's right. And there was a, an imp, an improv, shall we say? There was like a, an improv class in the in the drama rehearsal. Uh, this was actually in, in your sort of your second scene that you were in, where it was like, the, you were doing like an, an improv of, of a scene in, in a club. Don't know if you, I don't know if you remember this. And it's, it, it was like lads coming on to girls and it soon turned personal with Colin telling Paula Webster that her head was so big, you could land a spaceship on it. Now I have to say, Colin's a braver man than me <laughs> to be saying that to Paula Webster. Do you know what? You were sort of describing that scene. And one of the only reasons I remember that scene is because somebody had posted it online and tagged me in it. Right. And I was like, my God, I remember that. <laughs> and it's quite funny. You saying that line, like, I, 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 I remember that line. Yeah. Because I think it was probably <laughs> one of my first ever lines. Right. Brilliant. And so, yeah, that's uh, that's very impressive. Yeah, Brilliant. yeah. I mean, and that that led all the lads to leave the drama club, which we will come back to in a bit, because that gave us quite a, like a serious storyline. So we'll we'll come back to that one in a minute. Now the thing with Colin was sometimes you didn't know if he was being cheeky or if he was being stupid. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah. It was just one of those things because in a maths lesson, there was a maths lesson with Mister Parrot. <laughs> there was a. There was a message going round, Mrs. Keels cracking up, and it was like, you know, like sort of whispering it to each other. That's um, right, yeah. Colin was passing on the message. Yeah. Um, and he was caught by Mr. Parrot, who asked him what he was doing, to which Colin replied, Mrs. Keels cracked a cup. It was the, <laughs> which, sorry, rather than Mrs. Keels cracking up, Mrs. Yeah. Keels cracked the cup. And like you say, you never really knew if he was being stupid or being cheeky um, in his face. <laughs> In his first days, like I think at the time, because I was, because there was no specific storyline for me, uh -huh. unlike sort of uh, the Arnie and the Sam character, yeah. it was like, it was like I, I'd been hired because they knew I could do it. Yeah, you know what I mean. So give this guy the sort of the punchlines. Give yeah. this guy the, uh, give this guy a little bit. Let's see yeah. how he goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was the thing, wasn't it? You know, loads of people have said it about Grain Jail. You had all these serious things going on, but yeah. then you, you needed that comic relief. 
yeah. at the same time as well. Like, so you, you did have little things like that getting thrown yeah. in. And the lads ended up going back to the drama group. Um, and uh, Miss Jordan wasn't there. And the lads were being quite disruptive the way lads are. Yeah. And Jess took Joe's hat. Mm-hmm. Joe asked all the lads to help him and they all crowded round there. And then that led to the scene where Jessica uh, was groped. There was the assault on Jessica Arnold. And like I say, like, you know, you've got this seriousness going on then. Yeah. Because it then there was like they did like the reconstruction of it and all that, but it didn't prove anything. And Colin actually said he didn't think it was right that they were just taking Jessica's word over theirs. Right. Because I've asked other people who were in that scene about that. But is it right that none of you actually knew who was meant to have done it? Oh, God, I wish I could remember. Right, okay. Because <laughs> that was that was a long time ago. Yeah. So I, I I honestly, as much as I would love to answer that, I can't, I can't really right, remember okay. it. To, to give um, an honest opinion on that. Right. But, um, yeah, that was a while ago, but how did it pan out? <laughs> yeah, so it panned out that it was it was Brian had done it. Oh, God, Ian. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it turned out that it was him had done it, yeah. So... Yeah, serious stuff, serious stuff. Yeah, you were also there when uh, Mrs. Keel collapsed. That's right, the uh, heart attack scene, yeah. Which led to Anna being called the head killer. And there was inspectors, school inspectors were in. Yeah. And Mrs. Munro asked their class, what should they be grateful to the Romans for inventing? And Colin gave her a couple of answers. I don't suppose you can remember what any of them were. So his first one was fireworks. And then, right. he, went, then he went a little bit more in depth saying the Roman candles. Brilliant. Uh, Brilliant. Was what he said. Now, I have to, I just mentioned Mrs. Munro there, um, Anna Quayle. I mean, that must have been something to be to be working with here. There's 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 times when you sort of look back and you're like, oh my god, that person was do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You just you just didn't appreciate it at the time because you were maybe sort of in your own little bubble of what you're doing and all that yeah. sort of stuff at 13. Yeah. And the whole thing's an experience. But again, you're in your sort of bubble that you don't at the time appreciate who you're working with or what they've done. Right. Um, and I forget her name and that's really bad. Um, but basically after I left Grange in about 2001, in about 2000, um, I think her name was Amy. And basically there was a girl uh, in a storyline. Anyway, long story short, there was um, a, a, an actress or an actor that, that came in and um, she, she she played one of the girl's mums, uh, but she was uh, Mrs. Tanada Day, Tanada Day or in, in Les Mis. Right. Uh, in, in, in like, like the West End, like, yeah. like, on to, like the stuff that I had really got into after I'd left Grange uh, right. Hill, after I left Grange Hill. And, um, and, and I'd working with her and I had no idea that all the stuff <laughs> she had done. Yeah. I mean, but on that then, so... When you joined the program, had you been a fan of Green Hill? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, right, it's all cut. Yeah, definitely. People like, um, obviously, like Jamie Lahane and Alan Cave and Brian that went through, yeah. you know, the Dima story and all that sort of stuff. They, um, yeah, sort of going in to see them. They were sort of a couple of years above me in, mm-hmm. you know, so sort of seeing them in real life when you got there was was just mind-blowing. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine, yeah. Okay, there was the computer tennis tournament. That was the SNES, wasn't it? On the yeah, SNES. Yeah. 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 Sam was organising it because he wanted to win it. And no one entered because he thought that Sam would fix it. So Colin suggested doing it more fairly, being the voice of reason here, holding the grand draw to get more people involved. He also got older kids involved, which Sam wasn't happy <laughs> Because now he'd have no chance of winning. And Colin was thrown against Dill. Yeah. And they couldn't get through their game because wherever they played it, someone always came and turned it off. Eventually, Colin did beat Dill, eventually, because yeah. of Dave the caretaker, who eventually uh, let, let them finish and let them play it. And it all it all went weird, like with people being angry because Sam was winning and, you know, they were all thinking it was a fix. And... In the end, 
they got rid of the tennis because Anna nicked the the uh, the cartridge. So they <laughs> they ended up they ended up playing a football match and Sam did win. He did, yeah. But they were all caught by uh, Mr. Parrot and taken to Mr. Robson's office, who asked Sam to contribute them the prize money to charity to avoid uh, any sort of punishment. Now, in that series, there was a, a, a quiet trip to Germany. Yeah, um, I was involved in that. I remember that, though. Is, is there any reason why you weren't involved, or was it just the way the script went? I think it was just the way the script went. Plus, obviously, I think there was probably... The people that went were probably a bit older and therefore didn't need chaperoning as much. And right, I think so, yeah, probably yeah. a logistical thing as well as script. Oh, yeah. Plus, yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. I wasn't in the choir at yeah, all. Yeah, I'd, ne- I'd, I'd never thought of that before. Colin and Dill and Hammy were talking to Mrs. Munro about the choir trip, and Colin said it wasn't fair that they got a week off school, and he hoped that they all got travel sick, and that there was no sick bags on the <laughs> coach for them. My God! So, which Mrs. Munro called him a disgusting child. She probably had a point. To be fair, like. Now, that moves us on to Series 18. Nice. Um, and you were only in nine episodes in this one. Is that one. right? In Series 18? Yeah, in, in your second one. Yeah. So, Colin had heard Miss Carver and Mr. Hankin talking about Mrs. Maguire, the school secretary, birthday. And he suggested that they got a, a gorilla gram because his dad had got his mum one for her birthday. And a gorilla gram turned up at the school. Right. But went to Poppy Poppy's class instead, Poppy in year seven. Yeah. Because he'd gone the wrong place. The, the, the gorilla gram was upset. And Colin, right. actually, Colin actually found him sitting in the toilets. But then there was a thing which, this wouldn't exactly be a big thing now. But in 1995 it was because Anna had a mobile phone in school. Really? Yeah. Which she said their brother had given to it um, right. to which Colin asked well what is your brother is he a yuppie or a drug dealer <laughs> and it's it turned out that he actually was a drug dealer fantastic and Anna was actually doing a little bit of work for her brother <laughs> and she she'd taken the phone without asking him as well and you know that's what we we're saying there you've got Colin being like the, the comic relief but yeah, there, yeah but there is all this stuff there is all this stuff going on at the same time. Yeah, yeah. But that's just it. I think, again, because of the way things were working, especially because there was no specific storyline for me at the time, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, because of the way, the way it all works sort of thing, you know, they, I think they, they had ideas for storylines for specific people. And they're like, obviously we'll bring Anna in and she's going to have this and you've got Hammy. And then, whereas my character was very much like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just jumping into people's storylines, going, yeah, um, no, because there was other things about drugs in that in that series where there was a big thing about like uh, LSD, yeah, and the police, a policeman came in to talk about drugs and all that. Were you actually, were you actually given those talks for real? Did anyone actually come in and say like, this is what's going to happen, or? I don't think so. No, no. It was very much like, so obviously you, you were required by law back then. I think it was like three to four hours of tutoring. Right. Um, so you'd have a, they, they had, they'd built these sort of purpose built sort of little classrooms. Uh-huh. Um, and so you, you'd have to do up until 16, you'd have to do three to four hours worth of um, tutoring a day. Right. So, what they would do is if it was, you know, they would be like, right, you do your, <laughs> you do your tutoring in the AM and then we'll be filming with you on the PM. And yeah. then the people that are filming on the PM, then they go back to tutoring right. on the AM sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it was just a classroom with a, with a, with a guy that just sort of sat there or <laughs> be like right. answering any questions. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah. Okay. Now this scene, I, 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 always, I I laughed when I watched it because there was a uh, basketball. Now it wasn't sort of basketball within year groups. It was basketball within like houses, and everyone was arguing over who was meant to be playing for which house. And 
we didn't actually see you playing basketball. I'm just gonna say I don't remember playing basketball. <laughs> but you were there, stood with everyone else, and everyone else was massive compared to you. So it was probably a good job that you that you weren't actually uh, playing as well. But I don't I'd think I that. don't think you would have done much to be honest. <laughs> everyone else is huge. Colin put himself forward on the school council to be the chairman. So Mr. Parrott said, well, he'd go up against Colin as well. And everyone voted for Colin because no one really liked Mr. Parrott, did he? He said he, he knew what to do, but he, he, he didn't have a clue really what he what he was doing. Right. Because um, it was things like, you know, does everyone agree? And they were like, no, you've got to, you've got to ask for a show of hands and stuff like that. You no, know, just little things like that. And, you know, we, we've mentioned Anna with the drugs and stuff. Oh, yeah. And Colin felt a little bit out because Arnie, Dill and Sam were discussing why she wasn't in school mm. and how and how they could help her. And they didn't want loads of people knowing that, mm. you know, she was off because she was, you know, um, doing this stuff for her brother. And they found food and a sleeping bag in the basement mm. of the school and decided to stake out the basement okay, yeah. to, uh, af- after school to find out if Anna was staying there. And Colin followed them and ended up doing it with them. But they went to get drinks from the drinks machine. And when they came back to the basement, the food and the sleeping bags had gone and they decided to leave the school. And then they found out that the sleeping bag belonged to Julie Corrigan, who was staging a protest in the school field against a road being built. And I don't know if you remember this, Colin took his dog to school Yes, I do remember that because we filmed that outside. <laughs> I do remember that. R- random. Yeah, random. And then didn't he like run away? Yeah. Run so away? he asked Julie to look after Monster. That was the dog's Monster. name. Monster. <laughs> God. Um, in a tent. And then she did. But when he went to get him back, he ran off and he ran off into the into the school basement again. But then he ran off behind the pipes and they dislodged a packet behind the pipes, which had clothes and stuff mm. um, wrapped in a newspaper from the newspaper was two weeks ago and they realised that it was Anna's uniform, it was Anna's clothes oh, yeah. basically and they went to Anna's house and they heard a mum and brother talking and neither of them knew where she was mm. um, she got to Scotland didn't she? That, that was later on she did, oh. she'd gone there yeah, she did eventually come back now the fund there was a fundraising day. I don't know if you can remember what your role was on fundraising day. If I tell you there was a rugby match between the girls. <laughs> so Colin's role on the fundraising day was he was a cheerleader. Oh, was I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The uh, blonde long long wig, short skirt, pom oh, and all that. Somebody's um, got to find this. <laughs> now, <laughs> your final appearance in 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 that series, yeah, coincided with the very first appearance of Simon Long as Rick Underwood, because obviously, by this point, Kevin Bishop had been asked to leave. Shall, shall we say, you know, like Kevin's been on here and he. He, he was he was quite frank about what happened and uh, <laughs> I, I, I talked about it. It's well documented about why he left. But how did the cast feel about when, when something like that happens? Does it change dynamics in the I imagine it must do, you know. But how did the cast feel it about it? It does. But at the time as well, as you, as, being, as you mentioned, I, I never have remembered, but... We've, we're filming for, we were filming for sort of four to, I don't know, maybe four or five months or something like that. Uh-huh. Maybe it was longer. I can't remember. But, and then, and then obviously if I, if I was only in what, eight episodes of 23, I think it is. Yeah. Like you're not there that much. It's right. not like it was like, don't get me wrong. It was sad when people left and you're like, ah, oh, you know, but yeah. It, it's not it was never like you're you're always it's not like going to work five days a week yeah. for the rest of your life and you're like right. if somebody major goes you're like oh do you know yeah, yeah. It, it, you know because you were you had your own life and all that sort of stuff um 
So I don't remember at the time being like, well, this changes everything. Right, I get because yeah, yeah. Somebody new had come in and you'd yeah. be like, and you just kind of work the storyline and, and you know, I had, you know, Aiden and all that sort of stuff. So I had the sort of the people that I knew there anyway. Right, okay, yeah. Okay. Um, but I love the way Rick is introduced because Jessica just says to Arnie, hey, isn't that your new mate? Like, <laughs> like he's never been there before. And it's just, isn't that your new mate? And there he is. Similar. Now, yeah, yeah. No one would ever know. And there was a lonely heart scheme that some of the older lads were running, right? You know, a matchmakers type thing. And Rick Rick was actually taking part in it. And he was under the name of Young Gun. And <laughs> Co Colin was laughing at him until Rick told him that it had actually worked. So Colin then goes over to a group of girls and he's trying to, like, you know, be all, uh, be flash with them. And they asked him who he was. And Colin says, you can call me Young Gun 2, the sequel. All right. Um, to which Kelly just says, yeah, but any creep can sound good with a flash name, can't it? <laughs> because a flash name is Young Gun 2. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, which then moves us on to um, series 19. Now, IMDB, is, I know it's not the most reliable, but it's only got you down for four episodes. In this series, which really? I'm, which I'm going to be honest, helped me out a lot when I was doing research. No. I only had to do four episodes for that series, so that was big. But it was it it went on air in '96. Right. It was filmed '95 because at the same time, you filmed different for girls. Yeah, I mean, again, different for girls. That was I was only in that very, very, very briefly, and again, randomly. That was a <laughs> yeah. That was a shower scene of yeah. which we were sort of uh, sort of bullying the. Uh, you uh, you were very different in that. Than what you yeah, were. yeah, it was good to do something different. Yeah, um, but I think you probably find the reason because ninety five ninety six. So that would have been when I was probably doing my GCSEs. Right, okay. They always reduce your yeah. Cool. Okay. Workload. Not that it made a difference. No, no, no. If you don't mind me saying, Colin. You look very different in this series to how you did, yeah. When you first started, I mean, it it's probable to say that you look like two completely different people. Yeah, you know, I can tell you why that is. Yeah. So, so do you remember? It's a quite it's an interesting story, and it was it was quite transformative. <laughs> right. Do you remember how I see? I used to swim for the county and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah. So I finished swimming for the county. And then I go to secondary school and then suddenly I kind of balloon. And so, but it wasn't just the ballooning of, of, of getting bigger. It was like things, it was like other things that were happening. Like my hair started to turn sort of very hay-like and yellowish. Right. And um, my hat, my, the, the knuckles here were crunch. It was just terrible. Anyway, so he goes to the doctors and the doctors go, oh, he's just turning out to be like his old man. Cause my old right. man was slightly larger at the time. And then, and then I was, I mean, I was really struggling, uh, like walking and stuff like that. Anyway, so, <laughs> so we go back to the doctors again and um, my parents are there, obviously, because I was 14 by now, something like that. And there's, we go to a specialist and the guy goes, um, the specialist goes, he goes, sorry, I'm just going to bring some people in. Just like in Friends when Rob... <laughs> yeah, yeah. On the back yeah. And bring... That's literally what happened. And he brought all these people in. This is a true story. But all these people in. And there were student doctors. And the, stu the doctor goes, right, somebody described this boy to me. Like, wow. what, 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 what's, what's... And then they were like... He was like, good, be frank, be frank. And they, so they were like, um, well... Um, a bit fat <laughs> and the doctor's like good excellent what else and, and they were like um his hair is like straw like yes what else he's got uh and i had a very uh yeah like yellow skin it was like uh, uh, uh and he was like yes he goes right so somebody diagnosed what's wrong with this child just by looking at him and as it turned out i had massively underactive thyroid so you've wow. got a thyroid in your throat that makes you go that makes you go through puberty and and, yeah. and all of that but without a thyroid nothing happens 
Right. And that's what it was. I had uh, no thyroid. I had a, or a massively underactive thyroid. And so what happened was um, like they took pictures of me in magazines, like in pants, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> wow. Um, uh, as a as a as a as a, somebody in the dictionary going, what does somebody that look like with an underactive thyroid? This guy. This is the guy. Wow. Like it was, I was, I was like the most cliche. This is what an underactive thyroid goes. So anyway, long story short, um, started taking thyroxine, which is what you do. And within uh-huh. a couple of months, I started to grow, um, and just to wait, obviously, because you starting to yeah. grow, and everything starts kicking in, and and yeah. Um, but apparently, the doctor took the my parents to a side, and he went, "He's not still in school, is he?" And they were like, "Yeah." He was like, "He sh- like how he's." Like he, he was basically, I was on the verge of not being here. Wow. Yeah. But I didn't know that until years later when my parents told me. Blimey. Yeah. It was really bad. Like I was, and they were, he was like, how is he still in school? Yeah. Like it blew his mind. So anyway, so that is the story. (laughs) Because it's like at first you would think, you know, if you didn't know you would think it's puberty, puberty hit him. Do you know what I mean? But it hit him massively like, wow, that's that's yeah. a sort of blind. And that's a lifelong thing. I still take it to this day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> now I've mentioned I've mentioned we've, we've we've mentioned Arnie quite a bit, you know, yeah. Aiden. But who would you say like your your best friends on the program? Uh Wait. definitely the most people I hang out was was uh so obviously um who came a couple of years later was Wayne Sutcliffe. Oh yeah. Or, or Peter, Peter Morton. Yeah. So me and Peter, we in real life lived seven minutes away from each other, right. went to the same school. And so, yeah, we kind of grew up together. Um, and Peter and Aiden were very close. Yeah. And so they were kind of, that was his sort of London connection. And so, yeah. And so, yeah, I'd say sort of Pete was definitely, of which he texted me a couple of days ago, even though he lives in America now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he was back over. Um, so yeah, so definitely, um, yeah, we we it's a bit again, a bit cliche, but you do just grow up together, yeah, very quickly, yeah, okay, all right. So, in that series, then uh, series 19, I say you weren't in it that much, but no. you know, still involved a little bit. There was this, there was a bit where Arnie had come up with the idea of uh, recording the book that they were learning in their English class, recording an audio version of it because right. they realized that. He realized that people learned better things better when they were listening to them. Like you could learn things off by heart listening to them. So Colin, Arnie, Dill, and Laurie got together in Arnie's house to record it, but it just took too long. Yeah. So they had to make cuts. And because they were they were, you know, they recorded it, they sold it to everyone. Then Miss Carver gave them a test on the book. Yeah. And she realised that everyone in the class had pretty much the same limited knowledge on the book. Uh, <laughs> and when she asked why, no one would tell her. So she gave them all a detention. And in the detention, Christoph, the French assistant, took it for her, gave them the work that she'd set, but they couldn't do it. They were all complaining they couldn't do it. Christoph lost their temper with them and refused to let them leave. But Colin and a few others led an escape hurtling down the corridor until they were caught by Miss Carver, who realised that the work she'd given them was for her A-level class, and obviously they were only year nines. Oh, yeah. So God. no way they could have done it. Yeah. Um, now, that year was the year of the, the school production of Greece, And again, you weren't involved with that. I'm, I'm, I'm spotting a theme here, that where there's any singing involved, they're not asking you <laughs> too much uh, with the choir and the... Oh God, yeah. I mean, like, I yeah. To this day, terrible. <laughs> but um, but again, I think that was that was again. You got sort of rehearsals going on for that, and again, I think that was sort of older the older year groups that were yeah. doing that. That's all quite good. However, there is a scene where you and Arnie were singing "Beauty School Dropout" to Laurie. And Mr. Robson comes out and 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 tells them off because there's an exam going yeah. on. And as they're walking off, Colin said exams were no good because they don't get you a job, which is a belief that, you know, a lot of people still have, don't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a lot of people still have. I mean, so 
Yeah. That then moves us on to series 20. Yep. With, there was a thing uh, that went on for a, a, a few episodes about human rights. And there was yeah. a political prisoner called Anne Louis. Yes. I remember this, yeah. Were you given any sort of research or anything in, into that, like into Amnesty International or, or anything like that? I don't think so. Not right. particularly. I mean, if we did, then forgive me, I've forgotten. But um, but I don't think so. But it was, yeah, it was... A, they did have some good good storylines. Well, in, in that one, there was a... They had a cage which was representing right. political prisoners. And so yeah. people were taken in it. Colin wasn't happy that everyone wasn't taking it seriously. For yeah. example, Mr. Hankin. Now, yeah. we need to talk about Mr. Hankin because Lee, uh, like Lee Corns has been on here and I was virtually in a daze talking to him because it's yeah. Lee Corns, you know what I mean? But, yeah. I mean, he, he must have been another one. I know you were saying before about, you know, working with people, but he, he, he must have been great. He must have been like, oh, God, not this guy again. Because, <laughs> because yeah, he's talking about people that, yeah, exactly what you said. Because I saw between sort of 15 and 16, 14, 15, 16, they're, they're your like formative years, aren't yeah. they? So whatever you're into then, you're probably still into as an adult. Uh-huh. And what was coming out then in about 96, 95, 96 was Bottom with yeah. Rick Bell <laughs> and Adrian Edmondson. Now, everybody's like, oh, I really enjoyed the young ones. But the young ones was, was before my time. Like Rick. it didn't... I, uh-huh. I didn't really have any connection but on bbc2 or wherever it was bottom was coming out and it was it was the funniest thing i've ever seen yeah. like it's just filthy comedy it was it was the best thing and to this day if it's on i still watch it like it's yeah. my favorite program of all time right but realizing that the science teacher <laughs> was dickhead yeah in, in bottom like, hey, I mean, Lee, Lee must have been like, oh, God, I'm not, I haven't got a scene with this guy because he just <laughs> asked me questions about Rick Mail and Adrian Edmondson. But it's yeah. a good story. This is a great story. And I, I, you know how when you're 15, you've got to go and do work experience. Uh-huh. So I managed to get work experience at the BBC. Right. So we film it in Elstree, but I managed to get it at BBC... Uh, um, what do you call it? White White uh, City. Uh, White City. Yeah. Actually in the studios. So I worked, my first week I worked on, I don't know, I think it was Blue Peter. That was, I worked on Blue Peter for a week. Answering mail, that sort of stuff. Yeah. But in the BBC, there was five restaurants all on top of each other, right? Right. And, um, and, and you'd be like, right, it's your lunchtime, go for lunch. So I'd be like, oh, okay. So I just went off by myself and uh, went to one of the restaurants and got my little tray got my little sandwich or whatever it was <laughs> and went and sat down on a table. It was a table of four, but it was empty, whatever. Anyway, it got really busy and there was no more tables. And this guy comes over and goes, excuse me, are all these seats available? And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. go for it. I'm yeah, whatever. And this is a true story. He goes, he goes, aid Rick over here. No, <laughs> I think it was like Ed by or something like that. And the director and they, and in full costume, <laughs> like my absolute idols, Rick Mellon, Adrian Edson, come over and sit down. And I'm just like, like, what can you do? I, yeah. I mean, I don't want to like geek out too much because I was, I'd been on TV and I'd had people come up to me. <laughs> and go, ah. So I kind of knew what it was like. So I, thought, yeah. I have to play this so cool. Oh my God. And yeah, I was just like, oh, hey, how's it going? Oh yeah, worked. Jeez, what? Yeah. Oh. I, was, I was in the biz. <laughs> Just like sweating, like knowing uh, I will never get this opportunity again. Oh my word! And um, yeah, I remember asking Rick Mail like who his favorite comedian was, and he was like, "Oh, Alan Partridge." That he because he's really funny at the moment. Yeah, and I remember saying, "What do your parents do?" And he said, "They're both." And this is the only thing I can remember the conversation. He said, "They're both headmaster and headmistresses of schools." Wow. And I said, "Huh? How did you turn out like this then?" <laughs> And he was just like, uh, uh, I don't know. Wow. And that was just all I can remember the conversation. But the next day, I was walking in the hallway and Rick Mail passed me and he went, all right, matey. <laughs> that was it. That, that's it. That's me. That's to be done. Like, oh, my God. No, you know what, right? Like, I, I, I said this to Lee Gorn at the time. 
I, there's only been two times in my life when I've cried when a, a, a famous person has died. And yeah. one, of, one of them was Rick Mayle. Yeah. And I, I, I don't get sad about Rick Mayle not being alive anymore. I get angry that he's not alive yeah. anymore. It's a weird, it's a really weird feeling. Yeah, like, yeah. like I'm annoyed, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Because we've missed out on so much. Yeah. We yeah, have. Because yeah. yeah. even at the age he'd be now, he'd still be doing it. Like, yeah, I guarantee he'd, he'd still be doing it. But you see some of the letters that he like he sent people yeah. over the years, and it was like you know, oh, I'm 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 gonna do this job, and see, so just he just puts abusive stuff back yeah, yeah. and sends it back. Yeah. Fantastic, like genius. I, I love that. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great story. yeah. Oh wow! I don't. I, I, I'm done now. There's nothing else to say. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Um, but Lee, Lee Corns, lovely yeah, guy. Yeah, lovely guy. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, what, what a guy. I mean, you know, Colin. Also, with that cage, found in that Kevin had been locked in it with a padlock, and they had to use like a blowtorch or something to yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. to get him out. Uh, Colin was on the school amnesty group, as we said, and he was trying to hold a meeting up for their next publicity stunts. But Carly and a few others were more interested, more interested in sorting out their own human rights about yeah. like where 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 they should have meetings and stuff. And you know, they wrote a letter to the prison that Anne Louis was in. And they got a reply saying that she'd been released. Nice. But then later on, unfortunately, they found out that she died crossing the yeah. Himalayas to get into Nepal. So just to take that little bit of a shine off it. Like Now, this was the year of street hockey. The first year of the roller hockey. Now, Colin was seen falling over quite a bit at <laughs> yeah. first. Colin Brown was seen falling over quite a bit. What was Colin Ridgewell like at the skating? That was such a <laughs> bizarre. No, it wasn't bizarre. It was good and it was good fun. But wow, yeah, that was a lot of work. So they had this rehearsal room, um, sort of on side of L Street. And 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 yeah, we spent hours learning how to rollerblade and things like that. And it was Andrew Davis, he was the director at the time, and he just had this vision of this is what he wants, and he wants to create this, the hill hogs. I yeah. Mean. yeah. <laughs> And and yeah, he just had this vision of it of it happening. But actually, it was a it was a lot of work, um, just just learning how to skate well enough. But the thing is, is that Aiden and another guy, or was it Sam? Sam, yeah, Sam. They were both quite proficient rollerbladers, mm. so they kind of got away with it. But there was a couple of us that were just like eh. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Well, I think Jamie Groves could skate, couldn't he? Because he was on his rollerblades yes. a lot. You yeah. saw him on them even when he wasn't when they were doing the skate, and he was on them like yeah. Yeah. They were entering the tournament. That's right. Um, yeah. And the Hill Hogs actually won the tournament. Yeah, that was a long, long <laughs> filming day. I do remember that because I remember just getting home and just being absolutely exhausted because obviously if if you miss the ball you know you got to do the whole scene again it's not yeah. just coming together and being like bah, 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 bah. it was like a whole you know so it was all choreographed is what you like yeah yeah right yeah, so it was, a, it was a long day that was that yeah. was that was hard work i mean hopefully you look good and all that sort of stuff but um and great to do something different but yeah, yeah hard work at the same time definitely and then street hockey was not mentioned again until the next series so it was just like, we won the tournament, we'll forget about it until the next series <laughs> on that one. Though. Yeah, maybe it was expensive. But there was also ice skating as well. There was a, oh, yeah, so they went ice skating as well. I mean, I imagine after all your training, you could ice skate as well as rollerblade. Yeah, I do remember that. I do remember <laughs> we're, us having a rehearsal as well, getting up early on a Sunday and just like learning to go and ice skate. I mean, yeah. great life when you think and about he, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the, the scene with, with the ice skating is where Laurie is, is obviously trying to make a play for Chris at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and she's fallen over. Colin runs over to catch her. But she's all really disappointed when she realises that it's not Chris who's actually who's caught her. Because, to be honest, Colin didn't have much luck with the ladies at first, did he? Like, the first few years, it, was, um, it, it wasn't great. You know, he was paired up with Dill for a history homework on facts and opinions. Yeah. Where they had to find out facts about each yeah. other. And Dill suggested that they do it at Mrs. Maguire's house where she was babysitting. This is a good one. But Colin didn't think it was right because 
Arnie had the fl- uh, Arnie had the flu. Yeah. And Dill was going out with Arnie at the time. And Colin shouldn't be having shouldn't be having a cozy evening with Dill. And then Colin went anyway. Mm. And it was a proper comedy of errors in the end. Like <laughs> that was good. I enjoyed that. That was really good. That's when the the cupboard fell down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what people that say. Good. Like when, when when you're doing when, when you're on something like Great Jill and everything's in the school. Yeah. And all of a sudden you get a different you know, not just a location, but a different studio set or, you know. Yeah, I mean, sadly, it was in exactly the same studio. Yeah. But, but, um, but yeah, it, I always remember that because I remember the, like just having a different costume. Because yeah. I think we were still in like year 10 or 11 uh-huh. when filming that. And so we weren't in sort of civvies yet, but but having a different costume, but not being in like a school uniform as such. I do remember that. I remember that being fun yeah. and being like, oh, and being almost like comfortable and being yeah. like, oh yeah, 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 this is nice. And then just, um, yeah, like actually doing like a comedy scene of the, of the, of the, 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 the cupboard falling down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so Dill pulled it off accidentally. Colin <laughs> runs upstairs to get yeah. the, uh, with the poly filler, he's mixing it. <laughs> but then he burns the pizza as well. And the cupboard falls right in. It's just everything, just anything that could go wrong. At yeah. that time, <clears throat> could go wrong. And then the teacher drank from the poly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so we got the cabinet back up. But as you say, after she had gone, after they'd gone, Miss Maguire did actually drink Mrs. Uh, from. And then she pulled the cabinet off the wall. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah, again. yeah. So Colin and Dill do get away with it because she thought she'd done it herself. So yeah, that was all good. I and... think it was good as well because it was like intimate. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't like. Right, we've got background action, 25 yeah. extras. We've got, right, this scene happening here and then pan across. You know how they did it, you know, you'd, yeah. like, you'd have a scene here and you'd have a two there and then yeah. and then they would be like, oh, <laughs> yeah. as, as, many, as many an episode went, yeah. oh. <laughs> and then, yeah. and then it That's not me next. anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then it would pan on to the next one. Whereas well, what was great about that is that you had sort of the film crew, which wasn't that massive for those scenes sort of thing. And then it was just me and uh, Rochelle. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was intimate and it was yeah. like you could play a bit more. and Yeah, brilliant. It was a bit like, oh, it's all about me. Brilliant, yeah. <laughs> uh, but that, the thing with that was the next day, um, Arnie was back in school. So during that lesson with Mrs. Holmes was talking about the class and about their homework that they'd done together. Hmm. Colin was really cagey about telling Mrs. Holmes facts about Dill because he didn't want Arnie to know that he'd spent any time with her um, <laughs> because, because they were going on. He didn't want to like feel like he'd done the dirty on his mate, even though he hadn't. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Just the way he was. Now, we, we've mentioned that Colin didn't have much luck with the girls because there was a scene where Laurie had phoned Dr. Fox's radio show. Right. About Because, you know, obviously she fancied Chris. Yeah. Um, but she never mentioned any names. She just said she fancied a boy who had an older girlfriend because obviously that was the Chris and Joanna storyline well, yeah, yeah. at the time. So, but everyone in the school had heard it. And when they were all talking about it the next day, they were all suggesting who it could be. And Colin said, well, nobody's suggested me yet. And everyone just laughed at him. <laughs> yeah, um, and then, then we move on again. So year 11, series, uh, series 21, now 1998 went on. Uh, and Colin, we we talked about Colin's singing or lack of singing prowess. Yeah. Col- Colin spoke to Ray about running a karaoke <laughs> at the Arches. That's it, uh, yeah. He didn't have a karaoke machine, but he said all he'd need is a CD player. When he came to set it up, he didn't have the right equipment. Yeah. And he didn't have a comp here. He hadn't sorted any out. Basically, he no. just said he just said to Ray, I'll do it so that Ray would give him some money, basically. And Col- Dill and Chris put Colin's name down to sing. That's right. Can you remember what song it was? Yeah, I do. I do. It's one of those things that will just never... Any- <laughs> I probably remember the lyrics as well. It was... That- don't tell me. I know what it was. It was... Um- oh, God. I do remember what it was. It was called The Big Bopper. That's the big, bo- the called. big bopper sang it, yeah. Yeah, big bopper, and it was, um, <laughs> it was, hey, wait, 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 hey, wait, 
<laughs> you're, yeah. you're under pressure oh, God, now. What is it? It's it, Chant- it, Chantilly lace. Chantilly lace with a pretty face. <laughs> That's and it. A ponytail <laughs> hanging down with a wiggle and a walk and a diddle <laughs> Makes the world go round. Ain't nothing in the world with a big da, da, with a da, 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 da. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of remember it, but it was Fantastic. many years ago. That was brilliant. That. <laughs> But what was quite funny, I think we did it in rehearsals, and I think it was Miss Carver, Salaga Hagen, that said, because I was very sort of, I was very much like, oh, with a big, and she was like, right, I'll give you a piece of advice. I, I really hope it was her. I really hope I'm quoting the right person. <laughs> it's okay. It kind of changed the way it went. They went, go for it. It yeah. will be funnier, and it will look better if you just go for it. Don't be like... Oh, oh, it's not that great. So I'm just going to don't yeah. do that. Go massive. Yeah. And that's what I've done sort of pretty much ever since with Billions. with Panto and stuff like that. It's just you just go, go huge. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Definitely. Was it your choice to sing Chantilly Lace? No, no. Was no it's okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, in the meantime, while someone else is singing, Colin's mum phones the cafe to speak to Colin because... Yeah. She thought someone had stolen their hi-fi when really it was it was next to Colin in in, in the cafe. Now, street hockey became a thing again, as we yeah. mentioned earlier on. Um, Judy Jeffries wanted to join the the hockey team. Mm-hmm. So Colin was helping it. Colin's mates thought that Colin and Judy would make a good couple. But right. unbe- unbeknownst to everyone, Alec Jones fancied Judy. That's right. And it? after the hockey practice, Colin and Judy went to the cafe and Sean and Alec were in there. And Sean had said that they needed to get Colin out of <laughs> out of the way, basically. Um, right. And I think this was like sort of the first time a storyline sort of revolved around Colin, I think. With like yeah. Colin <clears throat> Colin taking Judy to the bus stop and then the next day he comes in and he's been beaten up. That's right, yeah. With that, and the French teacher was there, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I remember that. Yeah, that was good. That was good. It was, and even the scene leading up to it, with the shot sort of going up to sort of Sean and Alec, you know, yeah. looking menacing. Yeah, you know, that was a really good. I enjoyed that. That was really good. Obviously, you don't see it at the time, but when you watch the episode, and you're like, oh, oh, that's very good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, you just you don't know what's going to happen, yeah. or how it's going to be edited. But yeah, that was good. Yeah, I think that was, you know, you, yeah. I'd been in it for a few years, but again, it was a small part that just sort of grew over the... Yeah. yeah. Over um, the time. And, and, you know, so they find out Colin's been beaten up and Chris then decides that they need to go and find out who it was who beaten yeah. him up. So Colin didn't want to do it because obviously Colin was the one that had been beaten. We didn't want to go through it again. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Ari agreed with Chris and Chris said that basically he was outnumbered. So... He had to go with them. So they get their hockey sticks, That's go it. looking for them, but they, they didn't find who it was. Yeah. And they went back to cafe and Colin was then upset because Judy was meant to be there for him because she said she'd buy him a burger after school and yeah. she'd gone. So Colin had basically been his chance. Now we need to talk there about um, about Laura. About oh, yeah. Laura, Laura Sadler, because obviously you know, sadly no longer with us. But yeah. everyone just everyone says how good, how good she was. To make amazing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, because she used to live, uh, uh, like ten minutes away from me. Right. So obviously, I when I got to the point of being able to drive, I'd go and pick Peter up, uh, Wayne. <laughs> I'd go and pick <laughs> him up, but then I'd pick Laura up as well, and then we'd drive yeah. to to Watford, uh, all together. Yeah, and then drop them off home as well, sort of thing. So obviously, being local sort of brought us closer as well. And so, mm-hmm. you know, um, yeah, that was a real shame. For an, um... Yeah. So there's a, <laughs> there's another bit with, you know, we, we've talked about Chris and Laurie and, and stuff like that. And Colin helps Chris hide in the toilets from Laurie. Uh, but she then saw them running away and that led to an argument <laughs> between them, which then led to an argument between Colin, Chris and Arnie in the cafe where Chris shouts that Colin, well, at least I'm not a virgin. And stormed <laughs> off. Now, when I was first re-watching these, at first I had a bit of a, a bit of sympathy towards Chris. Um, yeah, yeah. Because when I was that age, 
and you know, like you start seeing girls and stuff, and you just think, no, I want to be with me mates sometimes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a little bit of By the end of it, I just thought, my God, you're an absolute idiot. You like, I, I, I couldn't stand them in the end. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so they were talking again, and Colin suggested that the lad should have a wild night out. But he did invite the girl. But can you remember what the wild night out was? No, we were too young to go clubbing, weren't we? Yeah, you were too young. Yeah, it was too young for that. The wild night out was they went temping bowling. That was <laughs> that was their wild night out. <laughs> Who did we go there with? That so, <clears throat> so there was Colin, Arnie, Chris, Laurie, and Dill. Oh, okay, yeah, we're still so young. God, we're this, this is year um, Yeah, and there was then that that love triangle. Of Dill, yeah. Chris, Laurie, obviously Arnie's on the, the involved as well, but Colin was in directly involved when yeah. Dill, Dill wrote a note to Chris saying Laurie knew about them, and Colin read it before Chris got it, and that's when it all kicked off. Then, yeah, with that, obviously Arnie and Chris fighting, and Laurie and Dill, Laurie writing about stuff about Dill around the school, yeah. and Colin caught in the middle of it because at first Chris didn't see that he'd done anything wrong, which is why I said. You know, by the end of that, I was like, this is an absolute idiot. And he was trying to make him see that he'd done wrong. And he just didn't want to know. Yeah. Because then there was another roller hockey match. But obviously, yeah. no one was talking to each other. They were all sorts of... <laughs> uh, At odds with each other, Shouting yeah. and moaning until, yeah. Co- until Colin's team talk to play as a team. Yeah. Which seemed to be working until Arnie and Chris had a fight. And That's Arnie, right. That's right. Yeah, they really Arnie, went for it. Yeah, Arnie skated off then. Um, yeah. Then there was the trip to a dry ski slope. I'll tell you what, you got around, didn't you? You did all kinds of yeah. That was really good. I really enjoyed that. <clears throat> yeah, I do remember going, why did we go to a dry So ski you went slope? to a ski slope because there was a school skiing trip. So they took them to the dry ski slope, so in sort of preparation. Well, I wish they'd have done that. That'd have been it. <laughs> yeah. Could you ski? No. Right, so but- Oh, no, I had been skiing before. No, sorry, I had been skiing. So, yeah, I could ski a little bit, yeah. Probably better than I could rollerblade. So, yeah, <laughs> okay. I had been skiing a couple of years beforehand, actually. So, yeah, did the whole... Yeah, the snowplow, <laughs> snowplow. Snowplow. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, and then the series ended with them going on the trip we didn't actually see. Just, uh, never mind, eh? So, we move on then. You're in lower sixth now, series yes. 22. Here we um, go. And Becky joined the six four. Yeah. Uh, Becky and Kamal joined the six four. <laughs> My God. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like a train. Yeah, yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. This is when it started to get a bit more, a bit more meaty for Colin. Yeah. 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 Old Emma Pearson and, yeah. uh, and, and fella. Yeah. 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 No, that's when, yeah, storyline started to, so they had a bit more. The lads had a bet on who would be first to snog. Becky. Jordan Ludge, Colin sat with Becky and Dill, but couldn't think of anything to say to her other than, welcome to the school and enjoy your meal. <laughs> and the girls knew that the lads were doing something. Yeah. So they knew that they were doing something, which is why she was getting all excited, but they couldn't work out what it was. But let's just see where it led to. And nobody was getting anywhere with Becky, so Nathan suggested because Nathan was there by now as well. Mm-hmm. Suggested that if none of them got a date by the end of the day, they should call it off, and they agreed to it. But they all ended up getting a date with yeah. Becky that day. And was it bowling? Do? It was bowling. Yeah. yeah. But Colin was the last date. That's right. Oh, and so Becky had been bowling with the others, and mm. by which point she didn't want she didn't want anything to eat or drink because <laughs> she had to drink with all the others. And she was still wearing their bowling shoes. <laughs> That's right. I was like, you bought your own bowling shoes. Yeah. The thing is, is that <clears throat> these these sort of episodes, these later episodes, are the ones that I actually remember and like and 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 remember thinking like consciously about what I was doing and, right, and how right. I was, yeah. do you know what I mean? I think yeah. and so I do, yeah, I do have fond memories of the of the bowling and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it was good. Oh, even though they all got a date with it. It was mm. Kamal that won the bet. He was a little bit economical with the tooth, shall we say, about what had happened. That's right, yeah. On the, yeah, because he got a kiss, wasn't it? Who was yeah. going to get the first kiss? Yeah. 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 And yeah. Becky, yeah. Becky heard everything. So yeah. she she invited them to her, so she invited Kamal to her house. 
but they also told the lads that this was happening. That's right. And she convinced him to wear a dress and That's high right. heels to help. Yeah. But then Dill was there and she invited the lads in and they all saw Kamal wearing this dress and high heels and, yeah. and singing Hey Big Spender. <laughs> to which Kamal came clean about what had really happened on their date. Yeah. Um, and then, as you've said there, another meaty storyline came in. There was a log gritty where Kamal said he could get a car, he had a car that the lads That's right, yeah. could yeah. use. <clears throat> and it was, you know, all this bit's great where they're all like trying to come up with raising money to get it because they needed to raise two hundred and fifty pounds each to get it going again. And yeah, Colin, can you remember how Colin suggested he was going to raise this money? Oh God, no, I I, I can't remember. So like if you would... so Colin had a job in a petrol station. That's it, <laughs> right? Go he on. also said that he would. <laughs> I don't know if this still happens in London. He would wash windscreens at traffic lights. Oh, for goodness sake! <laughs> uh, ridiculous. Yeah, um, that's right. A, a job at a petrol station, like cleaning the forecourt. I mean, so random. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, they started off well. They got nearly £400 after their first sort yeah. of attempt. But they didn't have the rest of the money. So, Cracker had heard them talking about the parts they needed for the car. And he got a deal with them because his dad had a load of second. His dad basically had a garage and had loads of second hand car parts. <laughs> that's right. So they bought that for 200 quid, but then Cracker's dad turned up um, and stopped the sale and they were trying to fix the car and got nowhere. But then Dill and Becky turned up and Dill actually had some knowledge of fixing the car and and, and could get the car going. And Colin and Becky were always sort of on the verge of going out. Colin always seemed to be asking her, but he was really awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It never, ever seemed to happen (laughs) until Dill told Colin to just ask her out. Yeah. Um, which he did. Yeah. And then this, the episode ends with me. They yeah. went the, they went the cap. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Punching the air and put it on. Again, again, just go for it. That was somebody that was, well, hopefully it was Sally. And she was just like, I was like, how am I going to do this? So it doesn't it just look so <laughs> eggy. Cause that was something we became very aware that, that obviously the filming, it, it needed to be quick you know, turnover, there was no yeah. time for sort of messing about. So you only had a couple of takes to sort of get it right. And 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 otherwise they'll just be like that, I'll move on. So you just it was very conscious of not doing things that looked eggy and just being like, yeah. It's like, no, but you've got a... Just be glad they didn't like pause the scene where you've jumped the air. You know, like one of those freeze Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that would have been worse because... Yeah. Um, so yeah, he, he takes it to the cafe for lunch and it's all going really well. Until the lads turned up and say that yeah. Nathan's passed the steery test and basically just ruined the the meal for them. And Colin tried asking her out again, but she wouldn't agree until Colin spoke to Dill about it. And in the end, Dill, Dill said, come on, you've just got to do it. She might like the uneventful type. Yeah. And Colin, <laughs> co- to which Colin's retort was, uneventful? I own part of a car. <laughs> that was his thing. <laughs> now... Colin invited Becky to his house for tea. And he said his parents would be there, but they were all pretty cool. All his mates all laughed. And because of that, I think that's why Becky agreed to go. So when he goes, Colin's mum mom and dad, yeah. there. we meet Colin's mum and dad. People always say it's great when you get a scene like that. Again, we talked earlier on about like, you know, the, the one with Dill in, in the house. But when you get yeah. a family yeah. as well, because it sort of helps to like flesh out your character yeah. a little bit. Now, Colin's dad, Peter Peter Barnes, played Colin's dad. <laughs> but an actress called Joanna Mackey played um, Colin's mum. Right. And she'd been on Grange Hill as someone else's mum in the 80s. Really? She was, she was also Gunch Gardner's mum <laughs> as well in, like, in, 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 in 86. Oh, um, wow. So this is where we get Colin punching the air when he walked back home. After tea, she kisses him on the cheek, punches the air, and runs off. And they arrange to go to the cinema. But when they, this is what we were saying about like having no luck. When Colin went to Becky's house, her dad had turned up, and her dad's never normally there. So Colin very sort of gallantly stepped back and said, It's okay, we'll do it again. You know, you yeah, yeah. that time, we did that and all that. Um, and Becky wasn't at school the next day or answering the phone. So Colin went to Becky's house and Becky yeah. told him that 
the dad wanted to sell her house no. and she didn't know where she was going to go. And Colin and Becky eventually kiss. Yeah. It's, I know that might sound like a tough question, but when you're sort of that age hmm. and, and in your own life, you've got rage and hormones. Is it difficult to do a scene like that? Um, It's so separate. I can't get over how separate it is. Right. Like you could be sort of flirtatious off screen with people, you know, with yeah. whoever and, 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 and carry on. But when, when it's, on screen, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> like, it's somebody's house that you've sort of rent the, the BBC rent for a day, yeah. And then you've got, <laughs> and then you've got the sofa there, you know. And then, yeah. and then there's a. I'm not joking. The camera was like there, <laughs> and then you've got, and you've got a cameraman there, like, <laughs> like right in your face, like <laughs> he's right there, and the camera's there, and then you've got. A sea of sort of people, not C, but you know, you've got the continuity person and mm -hmm. and makeup just there. And and so there's say it's like seven or eight people just staring at you. And then you're like <laughs> a person. And then and then obviously it's it's drop a needle silent. Yeah. And then and then so you're doing this like smooch. And you know that hot uh, sounds so for that horrible. Yeah, the slap noise. Yeah, like so. When I say you can separate it, you can separate it. Like, right, okay. There is no oh, oh, and all sort of stuff. Um, so yes, so no, <laughs> right, okay. No, there is no <laughs> fear, not <laughs> okay. So you know, obviously, like Colin and Becky become sort of a bit of an item. Then. Yeah. Colin's arranging to go down to her house, which meant he wouldn't be able to go for a drive to Brighton with the lads because it was the first big thing that they were arranging. But when yeah. he went, when he went round to Becky's house, Kamal turned up in the car because all the other lads had dropped out for their own reasons, and it was Becky talked Colin into going with yeah. Kamal, which then led to probably your biggest storyline. Would you I was say? Just about to say? I was just about to say it's like my biggest and best storyline. Because we filmed that in a police, so where police train, right? Uh, in Hatfield, there's a big police training facility with like roads, so they can learn how to do what yeah. they're going to do. And um, yeah, and we filmed it there. And the stunt guy, cool story, the guy that was playing my stunt guy, because obviously okay. we can't hit the cyclist yeah. or anything like that. He had a blonde wig on. In the actual film Titanic. When uh, when the guy with the torch, like Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet, they've just been in that carriage doing Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Oh, and, yeah, um, in the car, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the car, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the hands, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so there's a guy and he's like, he's, he plays like a steward, you know, and he's yeah. got a torch and he's like, where, you know, where are they? And, and then the iceberg hits and he's the first guy to get washed away. That was my stunt guy. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, another claim. So yeah, he was my stunt guy, and he was the uh, he was the guy that hit the cyclist. But yeah, without a doubt, the best. Just so well filmed as well. Like I loved how like one episode finished, and then the next episode started with like the dream. Do you know what I mean? And the sort of waking up. Yeah. In that, you know, like that classic waking up. <laughs> yeah. Obviously better than that, but it was yeah, it was really good. And again, it was it was more of the intimate thing, and I think that's why I enjoyed it as well because it was, it was intimate. You know, it wasn't a big scene of so, it was. But was that was that you going to them and saying, "Look, can I have a story?" Or did they just come and say to you, "This is what's going to happen"? <laughs> no, no, no. That so both of those happened. Right. But on two separate occasions. So that one was all them. Right. Um, they that was all them, and I was very grateful for it as well. You know, you got the girlfriend, stuff's happening, and then you've yeah. got the, the, the this, and then you know, you got your crying scene for the first time to, yeah. you know, and it was all like, yay, you know, I I built up a lot of yeah. time and I worked on the show for so long that I kind of knew, yeah, I wasn't afraid of doing it. Yeah. Because yeah. I knew everybody that worked there, and yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it a lot, very yeah. much. So yeah, so basically, the crux of the storyline is that when Colin and Kamal were out 
Kamal took his eyes off the road basically because yeah. they were messing with the radio. That's right. And, and, uh, blur number two. Yeah, song two came on. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. But it got stuck, so they were trying to. They didn't want to wreck it, so they were trying to get it out. And then obviously they they hit a cyclist. Yeah, Kamal, Kamal drove off, and it was Colin was saying, "Look, we've got to stop. We've got to stop." So he does stop. Colin gets out, but then Kamal drove off. And he um, him up again, bastard. Yeah. <laughs> But we find out then Colin said he rang the ambulance, but he he'd ran away as yeah. well. And Kamal didn't want to know that he? he wouldn't he, no. he 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 wouldn't speak to him. He said we couldn't tell the police they needed to do nothing. And then we see Colin obviously becoming more and more withdrawn throughout that and and and, and not want not speaking to anyone and least of all Becky. And Becky assumed that he just she he didn't want to know her. Yeah, um, yeah. In the end, but it, his head was all over the place, you know, because yeah, right? yeah. he knew he'd done it, and because of because of the type of person Colin was, he yeah, knew he, he knew it wasn't right. Yeah, that yeah. they weren't telling anyone. You know, he heard on the radio that this cyclist was in critical condition, and uh, Kamal just didn't want to know. Still yeah. wouldn't, still wouldn't speak to Colin about it. And Colin threat Kamal threatened Colin not to tell anyone. Yeah, and in the end. Colin eventually told Beth yes, right. what had happened and yeah. went went to the police station. Mm. And again, th- this was this summed up Colin's character because when Colin told the police, he said, "Look, I don't want anyone else to get in trouble." He said, "It's me yeah. that's telling you." Yeah. And he just assumed Colin just assumed it would be him that yeah. got in trouble, but he couldn't believe that the police didn't think he was at fault. Yeah. And in the and, and Kamal went to the police station, but wouldn't own up to anything. And in the end, it was the Colin's mates told Mr. Robson what what had happened and why right. Colin was being the way he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And so eventually, Kamal eventually owned up. Yeah. Um, and Colin tried to get in the court to speak for, for Kamal. Yeah. But was sort of dragged out kicking and screaming because he hadn't been he hadn't been called in. Like, see great scenes. Great. Yeah, it's it's it, 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 it's a brilliant story. Yeah. Um, and I think the the cyclist must have recovered because yeah. Kamal's sentence was that he was fined two hundred and fifty pounds and banned from driving for twelve months. That's all he got. And so, so you know that that's what happened there. And then we sort of we move on then to mm. series twenty three, where by this time Colin's in the upper six, but both Becky and Kamal had left. Yes, um, Becky had moved up north with her mum. Because the dad yeah. had sold the house, and Kamal, I think, had gone to a sixth form college to try and sort of sort his life out, basically. And this is where Emily Fraser joined the school, Miss Fraser. But Colin and Nathan didn't realise she was Miss Fraser at first. Yeah. Um, they thought she was uh, a sixth former. That, um, that's right, Australian. Wasn't yeah, she? yeah, 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 yeah. And then they find out that she's actually their form teacher, and Colin ended up taking Kelly and Evelyn to. Nathan's gig because Nathan was DJing at this point. Yeah. Um, and there was that thing where sort of Kelly fancied Colin. Yeah. And Colin fancied Kelly a bit, but they were never really too sure. Yeah. Um, and Colin went and spoke to Kelly. Mm. But Kelly didn't realize that Colin was asking her out. <laughs> but then another storyline for, for, for Colin came in here. And it was, it was bizarre, this storyline, because Nathan saw an advert in the paper for a, a TV presenter. So, <laughs> so, and this is where, so, <laughs> this wasn't my last year, was it? This was my... No, party. no, this is your second to last year. Yeah. So, I, <laughs> I had, so basically you had the studios at the bottom and then you had the offices at the top. Yeah. And I was very good friends with a script writer, editor called Cy Spencer, who sadly passed. Right. Lovely. God, such a nice guy. Anyway, he, I used to go up and have a chat with him every now and again, if I was passing, go for a coffee, whatever. Yeah. And um, I was like, my God, I said, I've been in this show like seven years. I was like, this is my last year. And he was like, yeah, it is. Yeah. Last year. And I went, oh God, what am I going to do? And he was like, what? And I said, well, I'm just thinking, why don't, why doesn't it not be my last year? (laughs) And he was like, what do you mean? I was like, well, what if I stay another year? Because, you know, not done anything else. Why not? <laughs> yeah. 
So he was like, all right, let me, he was like, all right, let me have a word with Joe Ward, who was the producer at the time. And he was like, and I'll, 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 I'll let you know. Anyway, so this is what happened. And this is where this storyline came from. But I became a TV presenter. <laughs> I became a TV presenter, missed my A-levels. Right. Heads came yeah. back for another year. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, just, to, just to avoid me going to the real world. For right. One okay. Year. Okay. Yeah. So, so Nathan and Colin went for their audition. And neither yeah. of them thought they'd done very well. Colin didn't think that they'd look particularly impressed, even though Colin knew what he was talking about when it came to film. You know, he, that's right. Yeah, it was a bit all, of a geek when it came yeah, to Yeah, all this spiel. He, he knew what he was talking about. Um, and he did eventually get the job, as you yeah. said. Now, in the meantime, Colin had, had actually eventually asked Kelly out um, and took her to a comedy club where they saw Mr. Hankin performing, which, perfect. Perfect for Lee Corns. Yeah. And they went out again, but by this time, Kelly seems to have gone off him a little bit. Yeah. Um, she kissed him on the cheek. He tried for another kiss, but she, she right, just yeah. said bye. Um, yeah, but uh, but Kelly was also having sort of like her own sort of, you know, crisis of conscience, as we find out a little bit with the way, with her own sexuality. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah, we, yeah. We can find that out. Um. But I haven't said that. She did try and talk to Colin about it the next day. Um, but he told he was going out with his mates to try and make Arnie feel better. And when they were talking about that night, about going out that night, Nathan had said, we'll all go out on the pull. Sarah Jane had heard them say this. So she told Kelly that they were all going out on the pull. And then that seemed to be that. Uh, with, with that one, like, that seemed to be the end of, uh, of Colin and Kelly there. And when they were out that night, that's when Arnie had this sort of, the, you know, the storyline that Arnie had as well, because Arnie got really drunk. That's uh, right. Uh, the epilepsy, yeah, yeah. 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 And wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't yeah. listen to the lads when they were saying about how he needed to calm down and stuff. Yeah. They found out, they, they left him in the club and found out the next day he collapsed and had these, these seizures and stuff. And See, then that's what I enjoy sort of the, the, the latter part of filming as well, is because. We got to go on location a bit more. Yeah. You know, we went to the club here and there sort of thing. And obviously when yeah. you're younger, you're like, otherwise they've got to take the chaperones and then there's yeah. like consent and all that sort of stuff. Whereas when you're older in the show, and that's what changed. The, yeah, you got to do the different, like, like, yeah, go to a club. Yeah. yeah well, that's, what, that's what I always like about the sixth form scenes is that it's not just in the school. Because obviously yeah. I, I remember my own time in sixth form. And every Saturday, every Saturday, there, there, there was a club not far from from where I lived that we all yeah. went to, and it was yeah. like it was like the six form common room got transported <laughs> into this club that because everyone went, everyone, yeah, yeah, and that, yeah. that, that's why I, I think that I think that's why I like those scenes. Yeah. Um, so we talked about Colin getting the the TV presenter's job, and we meet Bryony for the first time Your as well. Yeah. yeah, and when when, when the program first goes out on the telly. Everyone in the school watches it, so mm. everyone's asking Colin for his autograph the mm. next day in the school. Um, but he also some some girls also said that he looked better on the telly than he did <laughs> in real life as well. Colin, I say Colin, Colin's got this job, and Nathan wanted in. Nathan wanted in on it, and asked Colin if he could be if he could be his manager. You know, right. uh, look after all the stuff for him, and then he says. Do you think Brian he'll need a manager as well? It's probably the real reason why he asked it, Colin, if he could be his manager in the first place. And Colin was getting fan mail. This is one of the things. And he and he didn't like it because he didn't want to have to reply to it. Can I ask, did you get much fan mail for Grange Hill? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we used to we used to get a fair bit, to be honest with you. Yeah, back in the back in the days of pen and paper <laughs> and and people people would be like, oh, because basically we had these. You know the the fan cards that yeah. still still knock about. Yeah, I don't know where any of mine are, but um, yeah, and they just they had a room. Go into this room, and it was like a storeroom, and there would just be like like piles of them. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And the idea was is that you'd you know you'd take a load and then you'd sign them and uh, uh, sign the back of it and then you'd you'd send it off. So yeah, you used to um, 
Yeah, he used to get a bit, yeah. Billions. Billions. But it was I... all, it was always all opened because it used to get sent to the office, yeah. obviously. Yeah. You don't realise it at the time because you're a kid, but it would always be opened and then sent to you. And you imagine what some of the stuff that got sent in that got sent <laughs> yeah. to by the by the team. You imagine yeah. the amount of stuff that you had no idea that was going on. Yeah. Yeah. Bless them. Good people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was when Nathan then took on the role of Colin's job because he said he would reply to all the fan mail for right. Colin because because Colin didn't want to do it. Uh, in return for taking him to the TV studio. And that's when he took him and he we 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 meet Briony properly, not just like seeing it on the telly. Yeah, yeah. And she she showed Colin a review of the program. Right. Which had said that Colin was unlikely looking. <laughs> Nothing's changed. <laughs> but Brian, he said they could sort him out with some special effects, which uh, was nice for him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, and then as we say, we, we there was this thing with Arnie having seizures, but he wasn't telling anyone what yeah. he was going through. Yeah. Because Colin and Nathan found him asleep in the toilet mm. and just laughed about it and told everyone. And it was still hidden from them. Yeah. Even when he collapsed in the cafe, because he asked Ray not to tell anyone. Yeah. But the lads knew that something was wrong. Because of how different he was acting, he was becoming withdrawn. He, he, you know, he didn't. He was withdrawn and angry. Was the way he was. Um, yeah, yeah, great, great storyline. And it led to a storyline where he was going to commit suicide. That's which, right. When you think about that, for a kids' TV program mm. to be showing that and dealing with that, mm. you know, it, it was very progressive. It's quite something, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but that's been said. For, that's been said about the 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 show for years when it first came out, and you used to you used to meet kids and be like, "Oh, my parents never used to let me watch that," you know. And um, yeah, it's always been it. It was always a very sort of progressive. All the time, there was funny stuff in it as well. But yeah, but um, it was a kids show at the end of the day. But they, you know, they did push 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 the envelope, push the boundaries, and that's what made it. Uh, it's a uh, length. Longevity, longevity B uh, yeah. was because you know it, it did that, and you know he didn't kill himself, and he eventually told the lads what he was going through. And Colin was offered the chance to present another TV program. Yeah, right. Which he asked for time to think about it because he didn't he didn't want anything to change. When he spoke to Ray, he said he didn't want anything to change. He didn't want his mates to change. He basically didn't want his life to change. And didn't know what he was going to do. Hmm. And when he was talking to Nathan and Alec during the, the homeless campaign, you know, like sleep out. There was a thing where they had to like sleep out in like a homeless shelter because it was a big like drive towards right. homeless. Yeah, yeah. And he was saying he, he didn't want to be famous. He didn't like the getting recognized stuff. So what was the public reaction like to you being on Grange Hill? We always talk about the fan mail and stuff, but so <laughs> The best way I could describe it is it's like being second, or it was anyway, back in the day, it was like being second glanced all the time, yeah. no matter where you were. So I'm talking like in Tesco. Is that? It's the double take. It was always the double <laughs> yeah, take. Yeah. Who's that? Um, uh, in a pub, uh, you know, when I was younger and, and single and all that sort of stuff, I mean, it was fantastic because yeah, black like, oh. And it was always, are you? It was always... My mate wants to know. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like to get an in. Fantastic. Um, Ox oh, just everywhere. It was always the double take. It's a really good story. I have many stories that are coming to me now. But um, I'm walking down Oxford Street. Right. And there's a program called oh, The 11 O'Clock Show. Oh, yeah. David Donovan and uh, Ian something. Anyway. Yeah. But who had on a slot on it? There was two like little slots, and one of them was Ali G, and the other one was uh, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, so I used to really enjoy that show, and I thought Ricky Gervais was very funny. Like this is eleven o'clock show. This is years ago. Anyway, so I'm walking down. This is a true story. Walking down Oxford Street, and I shoulder hit this guy. And I'm like, oh, sorry. And I was like, I'm like, oh my god. I said, <laughs> mate, I said that was Ricky Gervais. Anyway, so as I come back. Somebody hits me and they turn around and they go, oh, my God, that's Colin from Grain Chill. <laughs> it's so, it's so it weird. Is. <laughs> it's so weird. I never forget that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my, it God, is. It's, oh my God, it's Colin from Grain Chill. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah, there was a lot of, yeah, a lot of double takes. Oh, so I go, when I'm 21, I'm with a family. We're uh, with my family. We're going into Disneyland in America. We're <laughs> just about to go through the big thing. And um, and so and a family stopped me and go, are you? And I was like, uh, yeah. I never remember. <laughs> Oh, cool. So the, their first picture of their family with the, the, the Disney and all that yeah. sort of stuff was me. <laughs> Mental. And that was in America. Brilliant. So, yeah, so it was always very lovely. Yeah. Like, it was always very lovely. It was always, there was always, it was always what people that were younger than me. And this is the bit that always made me go, okay. All right. <laughs> is that they go, um, are you that guy? You're that guy from Grand Chill? Yeah, 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 I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't watch it. I used to watch it like when Zamo was in it. Yeah. Like, like, well, that was before I was born and he was younger than me. So I don't know. All right. Good for you. you know what I mean? Please. Trying, trying to be that cool person. Oh, yeah. And I was like, that was 1977. So yeah. I whoever Todd Carty played, you know. Yeah, uh, Tucker. 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 Oh, that was it. As it was more Tucker than it was yeah. Zamo because he was a bit later. But yeah, brilliant. Like, well, that was nineteen. Uh, so, <laughs> so I've just mentioned the homeless campaign there, which ended with oh, yeah. ended with a bonfire lit by Linford Christie. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, randomly, <laughs> yeah. And then in that episode, Colin told Arnie that he was going to be taking the TV presenter's job, and he yeah. would be leaving Grange Hill. So conveniently. But that wasn't supposed to be what that that was never going to be it for you, was it? No. No, no, no. That's the whole point. That's yeah, you, you'd always you know, okay. Um and in a crisscross, Colin had gone to do telly and Brian yeah. had come to be a pupil. Strangely yeah. enough, at, at Grange Hill, Brian had come to to be a pupil, which come on to series twenty four, which was your final series. But Colin was always sort of he was still around because he didn't want to lose his mates, but He'd be telling them about like parties he was going to with like Robbie right. Williams and uh, and supermodels and stuff, um, and it it came in handy for them because Colin got them into a nightclub one time when the bouncers weren't gonna be letting them in. Um, yeah. But then Wayne told Arnie and Nathan that he'd seen Colin in school and he didn't believe him. He told him he was losing it, but Colin was actually there. Um, mm -hmm. because we find out that Colin, although we didn't find out why, we found out he'd been sacked yeah. from the TV programme, but I don't we never, I don't think it was ever actually explained why. Um, but he told everyone he wants to get back into his old routine. So That's when they invited, right. but when they invited him out on a Saturday, he, he said he had to go to a, a producer's birthday party. You know, um, he spoke to Kelly and said that he didn't sort of, he, he felt like he didn't belong at school or anywhere right. at, at that time. But he didn't want to completely burn his bridges with the people yeah. from TV just in case. Um, and then we see him on the phone trying to get invited to like to parties and yeah, and, and stuff. And it, it, it's quite sad, really, <laughs> to be honest. Like, um, And throughout that storyline, there was a big, like, there was a, like a racism storyline yeah yeah because when i spoke to, to renee about this i said it was good it was clever the way they did it because it wasn't just sort of white people being racist toward black people yeah, it was also like yeah, black yeah. people being racist. it was yeah. all like people showing their own prejudices prejudices mm. and i thought that was quite good the way they did it but there was a bit when they'd all been out one night mm. um, and colin they did encounter the, these these like these racists outside which i also thought was good because it wasn't just School pupils as well, you know. Mm. It was like it was like members of the public. Yeah, um, yeah. they were going to a fight, didn't we? Yeah, they started having a go, mm. uh, but they also started having a go with Colin because he'd been on telly. Yeah, yeah. And it was Colin then punches one of them. I mean, that that must be great as well when you're given that that sort Amazing. of thing to do as well. Like. Amazing, because obviously the guys that we had stunt coordinators come in and all that sort of stuff, and yeah, that was an absolute blast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fantastic. I, um, Serious issues, but yeah, and then this fight breaks out. But everyone saw the scarfers when the the police are there, and they all got away safe. Basically, yeah, that got out of hand. <laughs> yeah, and then it's what we said about Kelly earlier on. Colin asked Kelly how her weekend had been, and she said she'd been to a party at a gay club. Oh um, yeah, and had got chatting to a girl, 
And Colin asked her if there was something, uh, she was trying to tell him something. Yeah, yeah. To which she said, just because she hadn't gone out with him, yeah, yeah, yeah. didn't make her a lesbian, basically. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, some of Colin's mates had started a band, and, and Colin was starting to feel a little bit left out because we were always talking about it or practicing and stuff. And Brian, he asked him why he hadn't got involved. Yeah, yeah. And he said that he didn't think they'd appreciate the help because, as I say, he didn't know. He didn't know That's where right. he was yeah, supposed yeah. to be, did he? But Brian, he said, surely helping out would feel would be better than feeling left out. And he became their manager. That's um, right. So, but when he agreed to be their manager, he then saw a boy band manager in the school because it was going to be a talent show and his company was going to be sponsoring it. Now, he was sponsoring it with his band, 19 Down. Now, I don't know if you know this. You won't know it. I don't even know why I've said that. But there was a little bit of a continuity error or a script error because oh, yeah. when you first see this guy, Tarquin, he, Tarquin, he introduced himself as Tarquin Montgomery, right? That was his name. Oh, but when Colin sees him in the school, he says to the lads, that's Tarquin Fitzpatrick. <laughs> now, I don't know. I'm starting to think now. I don't know if it is a, if it is a script error or a continuity error or if it's something to do with his underhand tactics. Because there was all sorts going on, so maybe he was just trying to keep himself clear. I don't know, but anyway, oh, just me forgetting my lines, which yeah. is more likely. Colin had hid from him because he didn't want this fella knowing that he was still at school, and whenever he yeah. was in the school, you'd always sort of see him was like hiding around corners and stuff. And then because of the because of the racist fight he'd got into, the band's equipment had been smashed up. Because they oh. didn't follow the, so they were looking. They were asked. They turned to Colin to sort of try and get their stuff back. And Colin said he'd spoken to Tarquin, who agreed to have a listen to them. And Colin said he thought he'd be able to borrow their equipment, but he didn't know for definite. And like I say, he was always hiding from from this Tarquin. And we see him and the lads because the lads didn't want them to think he weren't professional. We saw them walking around the school in um, high vis jackets and builders helmets, so that yeah. they wouldn't get seen. And they eventually bump into him in the school. And he was quite surprised at how well they knew their way around the school. Mm -hmm. um, but then Mr. Robson gave the game away and they thought they'd blown their chance. But then we find out that, as I say, this Tarquin had, had all sorts of underhand dealings with Mr. Forbes, the inspector, oh. um, was paying him off and stuff. So they, in the yeah. end, they, end, they ended up not sponsoring the yeah. talent show. And the band... Wayne had had a lottery win, so Wayne bought the band new equipment. And they were able to play the talent show, and we never saw Colin again. I oh, know. That one <laughs> faded in the background. No explosive ending. No, no, nothing like that. No. So you said there you, you'd, you, you'd asked for an extra year. Yeah. Um, so how, how did you feel about eventually leaving? Terrible. Like it's part of your life from when you're uh, 13 to 21. Yeah. 21. Yeah. That's, I, mean, I was there, yeah, eight years. And so, again, it was all of your sort of formative years of growing up. And that's all you really knew. Um, obviously, but th like you're excited because you were going to do new things. Mm -hmm. But I think there is that sort of th that assumption that something will come along you know something will come along and you know it doesn't so yeah. you've got to you've got to you've got to work at it something chronic um i was fortunate enough to when i was 18 to get sort of panto yeah 18 17 18 18 and so i i literally still do that to this day i love um, that i love that <laughs> yeah. yeah so i'm at the uh the old savoy home of the deco theater right uh, playing, uh hook uh, in Peter Pan, right? But um, but for years it was like Rain Chill, yeah, Colin, yeah, years and years. And it got over the last couple of years. I've been like, I think, I think it's time, <laughs> <laughs> but maybe not <laughs> Rain Chill. And so yeah. now it's like returning by popular demand. <laughs> You're right. It's okay. Yeah. I've been there for years. I've been there for I don't know, seven or eight years, sort of thing. Can so, I ask? Because I know, I know, and the first time I became aware of you being in Panto, you were you were the Dame. Do you? Is yeah, that yeah. The, is that the role you still play? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, right. yeah, Dame's kind of my my my, my thing. Right. Uh, but this year, for the first time uh, since two 
2017. Um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a hook. Gonna be uh, brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. So yeah, when's the, you've got that? You've got to tell us now. When's that? When's that? On then. So it's the December the sixth to December the 29th. And that's the uh, the old Savoy, home of the Deco Theatre in Northampton. Brilliant. So, um, yeah, very big, old theatre. Brilliant. So anyone that's listening, if you're around there, get yourself down there, go and see Colin. So we'll talk about other things that you did after after Grange Hill. What did you go? Did you carry on acting straight away? Like, did you? I did. Um, I, I, I got the, the tiny, like, blink of an eye and you miss it, get shot in the back of her head. <laughs> I, I didn't soldier. know if this was, I didn't know if this was too, that's why I, I yeah. saw it on your IMDb, but you were there yeah, and, I went up for, and um, the brothers, yeah. I went up for, um, I went up for a casting uh, in London and I saw the casting director, absolutely lovely, and it was an American accent and I just, she was just like, it was for a much bigger part and she was just like, I just don't think it, your American accent is going to tie in with theirs at the time. And right. it just wasn't, it wasn't strong enough. I wasn't good enough. Right. Fine. So she goes, but I really like you. You seem like a really nice guy. Um, I might have a little something for you if you want it. And I was like, yeah. And um, yeah, so I grew my hair and um, I played a German soldier that got kicked out of the back of a hut and then, and then, as this big American convoy goes past, there's three of us that get shot in the back of the head uh, yes. uh, by a French soldier, and I'm one of them that gets shot. But what's amazing was that out of the three of them, they were stunt guys, and I wasn't. <laughs> um, but I get credited, and I'm not right at the bottom. I'm second for the brilliant. Bottom. Yes, so, thank you very much. Results. Results. Um, so I mean, lovely. But that must have been. An experience, just being on something like that. It was incredible. The just band, the, the band of brothers was huge, wasn't it? The scale of it was obscene. But just seeing how they created all the so all the scenes when they're when they're sort of crawling through the snowy forest at night, you know, that was all inside. That was all a soundstage. Yeah. Um, wow. uh, the the they had a they had um, these anti aircraft machine guns. That fired something like forty thousand pounds worth of ammunition a minute. Wow. Um, they gave me a a, a Thompson A one, and he was like, "I was like, can I fire one?" And they were like, <laughs> "If you want, like, just absolutely flipping as anything." It was like, "Yeah, come on, let's go test one." And so, uh, yeah, he gave me twenty rounds and just went, bah, 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 bah. "Brilliant!" And I was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, and I'm like, "I just got to go get my head shot off." <laughs> um, but all of that was amazing. But we filmed it in April. And what they did was, is you hold a, uh, or back then, or somewhere they still do, you hold a squib, which is like a half pint, half pint thing. And it's got wires coming down on the back of it. And then you hold it to the back of your head at a 45 degree angle. So yeah. when the blood hits the back of your head, it goes up. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so first he goes, it's a bit of a shock, but you'd be all right. I was like, fair enough. So anyway, so we do this. Bah, gunshot goes off. Squib goes off. Loads of blood. Amazing. They're like, right, we need to retake. I'm like, <laughs> what? So this guy comes along, just a cold bucket of water. <laughs> and it was April. It was freezing in Hatfield. And I'm like, oh, you know when cold water runs down <laughs> yeah. the back of the like, ah. And we're like, right, reset to go again. And that was it. That was my whole day. And that was one scene, episode nine, about <laughs> one and a half seconds. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Um, and I was saw that you were into something else called Treasure. That was voiceover. Yeah. Yeah, that was a voiceover. I never, never seen it. Never, never, no idea what happened with that. Because, I mean, I, when I looked at the cast on that, there was all, like, Liz Smith's in it, Mira Sayal's in it, Pat Coombs, yeah. Francis Barber, Colin McFarlane, you know, like, all, all these people, like, but there's no trace of it. I, 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 I looked everywhere for it um, and, and couldn't find it. Anywhere, like uh, I think uh, it was voiceover, yeah. I spent a while on that as well. Yeah, it says like thirteen episodes. You were in there, like, um, yeah. Um, like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay, so what are you doing then at the moment? Because you obviously you've mentioned Panto. Yeah, Panto, and then I work. Uh, I work in a restaurant as well. Oh, um, you know, as any jobbing actor uh, <laughs> does. Because the thing is, it's difficult to find one of these sort of nine to fives, mm -hmm. only because I leave for Panto for a month and a half. 
Yeah. So very fortunately where I work now, they're they're very good in the sense that they're like, well, we just won't, you know, row to you. And then when you're finished, you come back and we carry on. So that- um, yeah, very fortunate to be uh to still be doing that. I mean they uh, they, they must love you in a restaurant going off at Christmas. <laughs> Crazy. Mental. But <laughs> yeah. What um, can you do? Exactly. Exactly. Now, so I think I know the answer to this question because you've mentioned a couple of things, but are you still in touch with any of the cast? Yeah, no. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I saw uh, Renee, um, uh, the, the Grange will do, but yeah. the thing is, it's very much like, because of social media and stuff like that, it's very easy to be in contact with these people. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, even though Peter lives in America, we still text. Um, you know what I mean? Like, and he was like, dude, are you around? This is last week. Are you? And I'm like, oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm at work. <laughs> it. He goes, he sort himself out and do better next time. But do you know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, I'd say, you know, obviously, uh, yeah, went for dinner with Renee after the Grain Chill thing uh, mm-hmm. last year or the year before. Um but yeah, I need to be in touch more so with Aiden. That would be better yeah. if I yeah. Because I I'll be honest, I have to tell you off because at that reunion, we were sort of sat I don't know if you remember, we were sort of sat round the table you downstairs. Yeah, and, and you said, Let's do this. And I went, and Yeah, okay. Yeah, you all I, but you all said to each other, There was you, Renee, uh Spud Hudson was there, and Alan. Alan Kay was there. And you all said, right, we've got to stay in touch. And uh-huh. And, and I even told Spud off about this the other week on a, on a message because he said, like, you just hadn't seen each other since. But you were out there, like, waggy finger. Like, you all said you were going to... So I'm, this, is, this is me telling you all off on that it's one. Like, that, isn't it? <laughs> we don't even live that far away from each other. Well, that was the other thing as well. He said, you know, within, like, 20 minutes of each other yeah. or something. Bad, isn't it? <laughs> but like, life happens, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, life gets in yeah. the way of these things. Like, yeah. So... <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so we are coming towards the end, Colin, of the interview. So I'm going to ask you a few questions, and they're the same few questions I ask at, uh, everyone at, at, at this point of the interview. So recently, there's been talk of a Grange Hill movie in the works. Really? Um, yeah, Phil Redman's written it, uh, Sarah Sugarman's on board, Callum Jones is on board. What do you think of the idea of a Grange Hill movie? I think if I'm in it, it's an amazing idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So on that. Yeah. Okay. Whenever I put, whenever I'm putting an episode of a podcast out, I always put picture clues online oh, yeah. to, as to who the guest is going to be. And the first person to guess who it's going to be gets to ask a question for the next guest. Okay. So I've got a question here for someone, from someone called Clive Ramsden. And it's about the movie. And he said, if you do appear in it, yeah. would you like to be in it as Colin or a completely new character? Oh, what a great question. Goodness, that's a great question. Then you could be any... Well, I suppose you could be anybody in the sense of, depending on what that's written for you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> can I, do I have to answer or can I, can I see the character? <laughs> and, then, and then be like, I'll just be me. Um, I don't know. I suppose to it would only be right if I went back as me. It's okay. If I went back as as as, as Colin Brown. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Fair enough. So you said that you watched uh, Grange Hill. So other than Colin Brown, yeah. who was who was your favourite character on Grange Hill? That's a good question. That's a good question. I think I and this sounds like I'm just kind of I suppose because I was connected that way I did enjoy uh Peter's character I feel like I don't know whether it was, it was the energy that he brought to the character because uh-huh. he brought a very explosive energy to that yeah character, <laughs> yeah he did yeah. Went up. so I don't know whether it was it was it was the way it was written or the uh-huh. way that he just performed it, or whether it was a happy coincidence of both. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the way he just like runs after Alec all the time, yeah. <laughs> like, and it just has those. Yeah. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? But I think you know he had a lot of opportunity to 
Bah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so what you say it is, if you couldn't have played Colin, would you have liked to have played? I, I mean, it was just only because it was his character is so because he started off as a bully and all that sort of yeah. stuff, and it could only because it's so contrast. Of, yeah. It's like, a great character arc, isn't it? The, the arc that character has it. Is, is yeah, because he turns out to be, you know, it goes from being a bit of an ass to. Yeah. You know, and then obviously in in the show with the whole thing with with Judy Jeffries, blah, 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 you know that's a, a a very powerful thing to have to perform, uh-huh. and then and then to sort of come out on top and be a bit chilled sort of thing and, yeah. and be comedic almost, or he had comedic elements definitely towards yeah. the end. Really? Okay, so like you say, you were there for a uh, hundred and eight episodes. You were in Grand Deal for that. That's quite that. I, I, I think that's top 20, definitely. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm quite sure that's top 20. So the final question, Colin, is why do you think then there's still such affection for Grange Hill? Uh, because it was groundbreaking and because, and I, I've mentioned this be- before in this interview, it's because it happens in your formative years. Yeah. Because it it's crossed so many generations. Mm-hmm. Um, the 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 you grew up with it. Yeah, my parents sort of grew up. Maybe not my parents, but to an extent. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, but I'm 45, so you're talking people that were 55, maybe even 60. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then all the way down to uh, I don't know, maybe 35, 35 year olds. You know, yeah. it was it ran like 10 years after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I left. Um. And I think that's why it's because people have affection for it. I think more so, obviously, the invention of in 2000 and whenever it was three. And then you've got sort of B Sky B and Sky and Disney Channel and Nickelodeon and all these sorts of things. You know, for those for those first, I don't know, 30, no, 30 years. What is it? 77, 87, 97. So 25 years, you know, you had four channels. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. Do you know what I mean? And so... There was nothing else. Yeah. I'm not saying that people wouldn't watch it because there was nothing else, but do you know what I mean? And I think yeah. that, that, that's why there's such affection for it because it, it happens in your formative years and you and people watched it. Yeah, brilliant. Well, Colin, thank you so much for coming it's on. Pleasure. It's thank been great. Much. It's been a long one. I'm fully aware if you're still listening, thank you very much because it, it is a long one, this one. But no, it's, it's been brilliant talking to you. Eventually... Finally, because as you just right. said there, it's been, it, been two years. It was, it was, it was, it was February two thousand and twenty-three, wasn't it? At that reunion when when we had the chat about the let let's get together and and do this. But as as as, as I've just previously mentioned, life happens, yeah. doesn't it? Life gets in the way. But no, honestly, thank you so much for coming. It's on. been a pleasure. It's been thank you very much here and here and all your experience. So once again, thanks very much. And to anyone that's listening, I'll speak to you next time. Cheers. Thanks. Bye-bye.